What's up everyone? Welcome back to another episode of Country Family Forest Homestead. Now the following video, we're going to cut some firewood. We're going to start by dropping a tree, but there's an old rotten snag dangerously close, uh, threatening to fall on us as we drop it. Now this video was recorded about a month ago. Uh, recently we had an ice storm, which uh, I wanted to get that video out ASAP, so we kind of waited on this one. But now it's time. So why don't you join me as we hang out in the forest today, cutting firewood. Let's go. Right behind the house here, we're getting some firewood down. Um, and we got a, a dead standing here, and well, I guess it'd be a snag at this point right here. Uh, we want to leave the snag. It's full of uh, habitat and uh, homes for you know small critters and bugs. Um, but this dead standing that's right next to it uh, looks like it's probably prime firewood. Um, they're a little entangled though, so I'm going to try to drop it straight towards us here. Um, I made myself a little escape route right at the back in case some reason uh, the snag wants to come down with it too. But they're both leaning this direction downhill and I'm going to be underneath it and going out that back way. Uh, let's get set up and uh, drop some firewood. As I'm setting the camera up on the side over here, it kind of gives you a better angle of the, the snag and the lean that it has. That's leaning away and downhill. So this dead standing right here should drop straight downhill and that snag should be fine where it's at. Um, if it does come down, it'll also go downhill and I'll be going up that way.
All right, the tree I was cutting came down perfect. But as you can see, that rotten old snag came with it. Snapped off right there at the base. But this thing was so rotten. Almost rotted all the way through. But now we can start bucking this one up. All right, got it all delimbed. Now, before we bucket into rounds, I wanted to take a moment to mention uh, how I was talking about wanting to leave that snag up. You know, potentially that is the best option, but with the lean and how rotten this thing was, it was gonna come down anyway. And, well, the proximity to my house means uh, potentially one of the kids could have been back here. So in the big picture, this is probably the best bet for this thing is uh, have it drop down and it'll just be here and still be habitat out in the forest, but uh, now it doesn't pose a danger. Um, but now we're all delimbed and we're gonna start bucking this into rounds. All right, guys, we're taking a moment to uh, stop and uh, check out the saw. Uh, first of all, it's been giving me issues all day starting, uh, kind of hard to start and not wanting to idle. And uh, and then while we were bucking that log up, um, it started losing power, not wanting to cut, um, which is concerning because that's exactly what happened last time when the motor went bad. And that's why we just did a motor swap on it. Um, now, I... The, the gas that was in here was from mixed gas I mixed a while ago. So maybe it was a bad mix of gas or bad gas. So I'm gonna actually mix up a fresh batch of, batch of gas um, with some new oil. Um, and I'll check the, you know, the muffler and the air filter. Um, maybe even look into the muffler exhaust port and look at that cylinder and hopefully it's not all scored up again um, like the last one was. Um, so yeah, let's check it out. I already pulled the cap off. Did want to look at the fuel filter. Let's see what that looks like. I mean, it doesn't look bad, doesn't look dirty. All right, right there. Let's check the air cleaner. I mean, it's a little dirty. I don't think it would keep it from running, though. Should probably get a new one of these to put in there. Let's 
pull that muffler off. You know, from what I've uh, seen, a lot of the times uh, a loss of power in this model of saw is usually due to a plugged exhaust screen in here. We just put this one together and it was clean, so I don't think that's the issue. But we could uh, take it apart and look in there and actually see into the cylinder that way too. Did I lose my ratchet? My ratchet stopped working. Lovely. Wait, there we go. Yeah, it's clean. I don't know if that shows up on camera, but usually if this is the uh, bogging on power, this is completely blocked. It's pretty oily and sooty in here. Let me try to get this heat shield off of here. Yeah, from what I can see, it doesn't look really scored. Flashlight. Yeah, it doesn't look that bad. I don't know, I'll try to show you here. Yeah, it doesn't really pick it up too well in camera. I mean, there's some minor scoring, and it actually looks worse here on the camera, even though it's kind of blurry, than it does with the naked eye, but um, so there is a little minor score, not like the last motor was though, so I don't think that's the issue. I could hear it building compression. But it's really wet and oily in here, which that wasn't there before. I'm not sure what that's all about. But let me kind of clean things up and uh, we'll mix up some fresh fuel and... Maybe try starting again. Hopefully that's uh, the issue. All right, we got a can here. I mean, this is an old can, but it'll work. Um, I cleaned out the inside. This is holds one gallon, four ounces. So I'll be able to mix one of these in here. So this is steel H brand Ultra. Um, two cycle engine oil. So this is formulated for this saw. I mean, I've had these for a while. I don't think the oil goes bad. Hopefully. And then I've got a, a five gallon jug, mostly full, high octane premium uh, clear gas. So. Mix a gallon in there. This is going to be kind of tricky. All right, we're pretty much to the fill line.
right. Well, fingers crossed it fires up and runs good. I guess I could uh, try tuning the carburetor. I don't know. Um, actually, I think this is a, a non-tunable carburetor, but that was the only other thing I can think of. Um, well, let's go give it a try.
Now we gotta start chopping them up. Well, we're adding to the wood pile. You know, it's not full by any means. I think uh, we probably got two and a half cords here. You know, in the back we got some super seasoned uh, cherry. Um, and then we got some uh, really dry fir. And then we got some maple up here. And then that white pine that we just added. Uh, a few more rounds that I need to split as well. Um, we'll probably need about five cords all together, like I was saying. So probably fill this whole woodshed plus some and you get this other stuff out of here that we've been using for storage and well hopefully get this whole thing filled I guess while we're here I'll go ahead and mention that I I built this woodshed out of reclaimed lumber it was an old deck that we tore off and rebuilt a new deck and this was all the old tear off you know they're pretty weathered but uh, if you stack three of them together and make beams out of them and then of course the rafters aren't going to carry much load just using a tarp for now and uh, the shorter rotten pieces we use to cut down to make the sub wall um, but yeah it was all free wood that was going to go to garbage anyway made us a nice little woodshed all right that's it for this video now i really appreciate you all being here and watching now we're going to start working on some videos here in the near future that include the whole family. So be on the lookout for those. Now if you haven't done it already, please hit that subscribe button. Make sure you like and comment on the videos, share with your friends, hit that notification bell. And until next time, peace.